So beautiful soul family, Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. Let's talk today about when to hustle versus when to rest, or rather I should lead with when to rest versus when to hustle. And this is an interesting um, sort of paradigm that we're in right now because we are exiting the hustle culture. We are becoming more aware of the nervous system and trauma responses and nervous system overwhelm and shutdown versus the, the hustle culture that we have lived in historically that has taught us to go, 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 rush, 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 always be in a hurry, always be in that toxic um, illness creating state of fight or flight system overwhelm as a result. And so it is a delicate balance as conscious purpose-driven entrepreneurs. We are here to do something that matters. And yet we have most likely many of us experienced some sort of, um, you could call it trauma, or you could just call it programming that has caused us to shrink back, to shy away, to play small, to hide, to be hidden. If you are a hidden light worker, then this is the place to be because we are all about helping you understand the neurobiology and, and the, the physical biology of your body and brain and how it works and why it has not served us, how we can have this desire or yearning to do something that matters to go out and create heaven on earth, to bring about the new earth and yet not be able to make that happen. The seeming battle of the brains where you have the prefrontal cortex that tells you, I know what I need to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. I want to do it. And yet it's as if we hit this glass ceiling that will not allow us to move from the safe place. And that is our limbic brain that has received the program of not enoughness. Either you're not enough or the world is not enough or there's never enough of whatever it is that you need to move from this place of safety and comfort into your purpose and into actually being comfortable in being seen and shining your light and making people be uncomfortable and being the catalyst that you were designed to be. So when we understand what has been holding us back, we understand that healing has to happen through somatic therapy, like something that I do called brain spotting, otherwise EMDR is great. That is what will get you out of that, that inability to be seen and to shine. And once you have done the healing work, there then becomes the question of when do I rest versus when do I go into beast mode, right? That taking action is a critical component. People love manifestation because they feel like it means that I just get to sit on my couch with a bag of potato chips and zone out on a Netflix show all day or meditate all day, right? That sounds so much better. But truthfully, action has to be 80%. It's the 80-20 rule. We have to be in action often. And I won't, I won't dare to say that I know what percentage of our life should be in action. That is up to God, source, creator, divine universe, right? Whatever you believe in. But the truth is there has to be a balance. There has to be equal guidance and action, equal rest, maybe not equal, but the, the amount of rest that your body and system calls for, the amount of rest that the, your guidance calls for, but oftentimes there is as much, if not more action that is necessary. And so it becomes challenging to figure out when should I be in rest versus when should I take action? And so I put together some thoughts for you. So one of the first things that we start to learn as we heal the trauma of not feeling like we're enough, we heal um, the battle of the two brains, we have reprogrammed the limbic brain to start to work for us, we start to understand our nervous system. And so when our, our nerves kind of get fried, right? As we say, when we have been stuck in that hypervigilant state, we have been in that fight or fight perpetually for most of our lives, our nervous system can kind of feel tired, right? We can, they call it adrenal fatigue. There's some debate on whether or not that's a real thing. It doesn't matter. But essentially, if you have been stuck in that fight or flight mode for the vast majority of your life, the vagus nerve has sort of atrophied because it is like a muscle. It has forgotten how to turn off that fight or flight mechanism. People will say, I just don't know how to rest, right? I can't just be still. I can't meditate, right? All of that is that inability 
to switch into rest and digest growth and repair, which is the parasympathetic state of our nervous system. So it really is a biological understanding or a neurobiological understanding that is necessary. We need to get comfortable with our nervous system and understanding how to work with the vagus nerve, understanding when and recognizing the indications of when we have switched into that fight or flight state versus when we are in rest and digest growth and repair. And that growth and repair is a really critical point because while we can produce in fight or flight can pretty consistently for a while, we will burn out. And when we are in fight or flight, the body is being flooded with stress hormones. So it's very acidic environment and that will create disease. We want to be manifesting or creating from a state of rest and digest growth and repair. That is the feminine state. That is the magnetic state that is allowing us to receive and attract. That is where the guidance will come from. That is where creativity happens. That is when we will receive phenomenal insights that our physical human body and, and mind could not put, possibly come up with. Even Tesla will tell you, uh, as it has been documented that Tesla said that he would design all of his inventions in contemplation and meditation first before then doing it in the physical. That is again, a rest and digest growth and repair state of nervous system. It is calm. That is not hypervigilant. Okay. So we want to learn how to act from a restful state in, in yoga. It's the active rest, right? That we do not want to be in hypervigilance. Again, hypervigilance is very resistant. It is very masculine. It is very aggressive. It is doing, it is basically acting or trying to create from your human state versus acting and creating from your, your uh, superhuman, right? Your supernatural state, right? So calm action, not rushed. We don't want to have that rushed, nervous, anxious, aggressive, hypervigilant feeling. We want to have a calm state that we act from, right? So many times when we are in hypervigilance, our, our schedule, our daily life looks very unbalanced, right? It's all work and no play. It's, you know, work and working out and taking care of the hit kids and cleaning the house and taking care of the chores and da, 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 da. And we just keep going, right? We want to come from a balanced place. And this is a perfect time to explain when we are in that hypervigilant high energy state and we recognize that we are there, we want to come back. And the best place to get the nervous system or the best way to get the nervous system to calm down, I won't say the best way, but one of the fastest ways is to bring your focus and attention to your heart. Like I did just there, what I did was I took a deep breath. I rock back into the seat of my body. I bring my focus and attention to my chest and to my body. And I'm having those thoughts of we're going to calm now. It is safe to calm now. All right. So we want to have that balanced state the balanced schedule. A balanced schedule includes breaks. It includes family and social time, alone time. Yes, a workout, but not two or three or four hours, depending on your energy level and depending on your human design. If you know your human design, that's great. For me as a projector, I am not a manifester or um, I forget the other one, a generator. I'm not generating energy all the time like some of you are. And so that is my state of being. We have to be aware of our own design and what we need. We have to nourish and feed ourselves with healthy food, food that creates a healthy uh, microbiome with a, a plethora of different uh, microbiota. We want to have, if you can fit in 30 different plants a day, that's amazing. You're giving, getting different types of microbes from each of those different types of food that will help to populate your body. Fruit is amazing. Fruit, obviously, our body thinks, they say it confuses, right? The body's not confused. The body likes watery foods. That's why we can feel sometimes hungry when we're thirsty. The body's looking for watery foods. 
We also have to sleep well enough again for our design. Rest, I call them chill breaks with my kids, right? We need some chill time. We have to have that balanced approach and start to notice when we have moved into that overactive state and employ our, our tools and our, our skills to be able to bring ourselves back online. Because essentially, when we are in fight or flight, when we are hyper vigilant, our brain, just like my fist here, the stem of the brain swells and the brain literally in it, in its swollen state will disconnect the prefrontal cortex. So you have been hijacked by your, your fight or flight state. You are not able to think properly. Your executive function is offline. So we want to come back into that restful state so that we can think properly and again, be magnetic and receive and be in our supernatural state. Notice how you feel. Your body is like a tuning fork. We are constantly attuning and constantly recalibrating to the proper frequency and to the proper attunement, right? We want to pay attention to how the body feels. Emotions are the language of the body before they are given a story and they become feelings by the brain. The emotion, how your body feels. Do you feel really tense or do you feel relaxed? Are you feeling fatigued? Are you feeling tired, frustrated, overwhelmed, snippy, short, right? These are all signs that you have pushed it to the limit and now it's time to take a break. We also want to notice sometimes that there are external things at play, right? Energies at play. If you feel like you are pushing a boulder up a hill, you feel like you have to force things to happen. You feel like you're being forced to slow down. You feel like things just keep going wrong left and right. Mistakes are happening no matter how hard you try. Things just keep falling out of place instead of into place, right? It feels like life is working against you. Maybe sometimes you will just have sort of a heavy or dense or slow energy. You feel like you're slogging through quicksand, right? You've got mud sucking your boots down. It's just really hard to walk. Sometimes you will even see it externally in other people around you, where others are sort of checking out. They're taking a social media break. They're canceling their appointments. They're rescheduling. That is an indication that the energies around us are asking us to slow down, take a break. We can't force it when things are working against us. Allow that break, allow that rest time. You have taken that break, don't beat yourself up. And this is very typical for someone who struggles with, you know, the constant doing, that inability to relax, the, the perfectionist, right? We will feel guilty or feel bad for having taken a break. And so it is obvious if your body has told you it's time for a break or life has told you it's time for a break and you have taken that break, remember the reason why you did it. It was necessary. And it can feel a little bit uncomfortable, but just notice that the, you know, the trauma brain or, you know, the programming or the conditioning, whatever you want to call it, has tried to make, make you feel bad, wants to beat you up over that break that you took. Don't allow that to happen. Catch that voice, throw it away, say, thank you. No, thank you. You're not helping me. I needed that break. I deserve that break. I'm better for that break. I am more productive. I am more creative. I am more open. I am more magnetic. Whatever you need to tell yourself, but do not should all over yourself, right? In my experience, that has never been helpful. It just causes that downward spiral that actually takes away more of my energy and causes me to be less productive right? Don't look back with regret. Just notice when that feeling starts to creep in. What I have found is that for me, it means that I've rested enough now, right? My rest cup is full and now I'm ready to get back to work. To me, that's just the indication. Okay, we've had enough of this. It's time to get back to the grind, the hustle, beast mode, whatever you want to call it, right? We've got some, some strong words out in the entrepreneurial world that really um, sometimes we can relate to because we all do have that ability to shift it into high gear and be awesome and amazing. We just can't live in that state all of the time. So make friends with that feeling of discomfort and just notice it's an indication that it's time to get ready to go again, right? Time to take action, time to be productive again, right? <clears throat> also note, 
And I, again, all of the things that I teach come from experience. So this is one that I have continued to battle with and, and I'm seeing great strides, but it's, you know, it's a sneaky beast. <laughs> it will sneak up on you that if we are in that hyperproductive mode for too long, if it, especially if we're acting from a hypervigilant state, then we will notice sort of a bounce back or a rubber band effect that it's kind of like, you know, we're pulling back and pulling back and pulling back and pulling back and pulling back. And then all of a sudden we've hit fatigue and we're like, oh shit, I can't do this anymore. And it's like, bam. And we bounce back all the way to the other side. And we go into what's called dorsal vagal shutdown where the nervous system has said, you've done too much. We have to take over. We're taking the reins back from you. You are in shutdown, whether you like it or not. And oftentimes the dorsal vagal shutdown will last a far longer amount of time than if you had taken a conscious break, right? So our bodies will force us into a state where it can heal and recover as long as it's safe. Unfortunately, if you're you know, living in a toxic environment, that can't happen. Um, but when it can happen, the body will force it to happen. Sometimes you get sick or sometimes you just feel extreme fatigue. Sometimes there will be sort of a cognitive shutdown where you just feel like you're in this fog and you can't think straight and you can't concentrate and you can't focus. All of this is, is um, indications of, or can be indications of, or symptoms of dorsal vagal shutdown. So again, just remember balance is key. And we thank goodness are moving out of the the era of so many entrepreneurs telling you you just have to hustle you have to work 80 hours a week right even some of the biggest names in the industry um, like gary vaynerchuk or marie forleo who were two of the biggest voices in my world that kept telling you you have to push you have to push you have to push they have changed their tune i absolutely love jenna kutcher who is also a proponent of balanced action and guidance and taking that proper rest time Many intelligent people are coming to a place of understanding where we have to work with our biology. We are kind of like a, a very expensive sports car. We have to drive it properly or we will break down. And we don't want to get into that shutdown, that forced shutdown mode, because then again, we have to take more time off than we would have if we did not take or if we had just taken that conscious break. <clears throat> I always come back to the very well-known nursery rhyme, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream, right? So the key is rowing downstream. We're going with the flow of life. We're noticing what life is offering us in that moment and dancing to the tune of that music. We are going with the flow of our body that says yes is a, or now is a, a yes moment where we can take action or now is a moment of calm and rest and digest and growth and repair. We are noticing how our system works when we are able to open up to our supernatural being versus when we are closing down and acting only from our human capabilities, which of course will always be limited, right? It's time to cancel hustle culture. Thank God, not it's not just me saying this, that people are coming along. We're all getting on board with this. And there is there is a massive healing coming in the next couple of years. I'm so, so excited for this, where people are really going to wake up to the things that hold us back, what it's, what it's going to take to heal our trauma, our wounds, our programming, our conditioning, so that we can step into our purpose and be aligned with our guidance. And that will allow us to create supernatural things, literally bringing about heaven on earth or creating the new earth, right? So be in beast mode if you must, when the time is right, but know that you cannot live there forever. Come from a balanced place. You will get farther and you will accomplish more from that active state of rest. And when you learn how to ride the waves and work with your body, you become unstoppable. All right. I love you, my friends. This has been a fun one. I absolutely enjoyed it. Of course, I am bringing this to you now because we are in one of those moments that says, might be time to take a rest, although I feel like we're kind of coming out of it. We've kind of been in this for a couple of weeks now, but we've pushed because of the Christmas holiday. So now you may see a little bit of an extension on the other side before we start to pick things up back up in the new year, which is a perfect time for a new beginning. All right. I love you, my friends. 
I enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. Um, do make sure you share it if there's anybody who you think could benefit from it. Otherwise, a like and a subscribe is greatly appreciated to help the YouTube algorithm. All right. Take care, my friends. Namaste.